Hey there, fabulous ladies. Welcome to Bring Back Your Pink, where we celebrate the fabulousness of midlife and beyond. I am Jen B, your host, your biggest fangirl and impact-driven entrepreneur living my biggest and boldest life, so you can too. Get ready to leave behind societal expectations and embrace a life filled with laughter, joy, and endless possibilities. So stand tall, turn up the volume, and let's dive into the world of living life in full color. Together, we'll rediscover the power of being unapologetically ourselves, and we will release our inner vibrancy, and together, we will bring back our pink. Let's make every moment count, girls. Hello, ladies. Welcome to Bring Back Your Pink. I am so excited today. I have a special guest. Taurus is a fashion stylist and a personal styler, and she works with the beautiful ladies midlife. So I'm very excited to have her here. She's been in the industry for over two decades, and she's an Aussie styling legend. Her portfolio is super impressive, and she's been a force behind the scenes in London's high-end fashion realm, notably with Princess Diana's go-to designer, Jacques Azaguri. And, oh, if you've ever caught an episode of Xena Princess Warrior or seen shows like Jack Irish, The Wrong Girl or Utopia, you have witnessed Tara's distinctive flair for style and design. But in 2017, after years of crafting costumes for TVs and movies, Tara is embarked on a personal mission with the personal styler. Her goal? To sprinkle some of that Hollywood magic onto everyday fashion enthusiasts. So whether it's a one-on-one styling session at your home, a day out shopping, and who doesn't love that, girls, or even a virtual outfit curation, Taurus is on a mission. She is helping Aussie women over 40 find that killer look that makes them strut a little prouder. Welcome, Taurus. Thank you so much for coming on today. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much, Jen. Oh, what a wonderful introduction. Thank you. (laughs) Most welcome. You have a very impressive background. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. When I was reading your background, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, Princess Diana, Xena, Princess Warrior, like all of the things, you know, these are thick. Well, obviously, Princess Diana, everybody knows. Um, but, you know, Xena, Princess Warrior, that takes me back. You know, I used to love watching that show. So, you know, it's quite an interesting combination from London Science Fashion to these iconic shows. You know, before we start into what you're doing now, can you share like a standout memory from those worlds? Yeah, well, so I am actually originally from New Zealand. So I studied fashion design um, many moons ago and Then from there, I went over to London and I um, worked in fashion and um, making, yeah, these beautiful, beautiful uh, dresses. Oh, my gosh. Many celebrities were um, wearing. And, yeah, just I learned so much with the craft um, and with, you know, construction and everything that goes into actually making an outfit mm-hmm. um, because people just don't realise how much goes into making, you know, even just the simple T-shirt. Yeah. There is, people might think, oh, it's just, you know, even just a simple white T-shirt. Um, it, it, that so much goes into it. So I was making these beautiful beaded gowns, just stunning, um, and yeah, it was just incredible experience. And then, um, my, I, after being in London, I went back to New Zealand and that's where I just kind of fell into the film industry, mm-hmm. um, in costume and worked on Xena. And that was amazing. Just having this creative outlet to be able to create all of these incredible, um, yeah incredible costumes so um I was working with all of the extras costumes and we were just pretty much all day we would just be styling on mannequins um for the all of the listeners who have seen Xena if not I'm sure there's reruns happening somewhere 
Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was a lot, a lot of um, different fabrics, applying them on, you know, bras, making all of these just, um, yeah, amazing costumes. It was such an incredible job. I just loved it. Wow. And then that um, finished and then that brought me over to um, Australia. Ah, okay, because actually that was my next question. And thank you for that because I, I just want to divert for a little second you know, when you were talking about construction of outfits, there are so many jobs out there that people will go, oh, yeah, like I could do that. Yeah, no, actually you can't. Like, yes, a T-shirt. Like I totally would not know how to create a T-shirt that is going to sit beautifully. And, you know, especially for us ladies, the construction, you know, we it needs to be flattering. So therefore, you know, we need to think about how they are constructed. I watched um, a show, oh my gosh, and I cannot even remember the name now, but it's young designers that come on and it's a contest. And, you know, there was one lady in there that the construction of her outfits was just so stunning. And it made me really realise exactly how much work goes into them. Yeah, it's amazing. And because there's so many different body shapes, you know, people do all sorts of different shapes and sizes. There's not just one you know, there's just not one um, shape. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's it. Like it's, yeah, it's very interesting because we don't think of all of those things. But going back to what I was going to ask you, I was very um, intrigued about your transition from costume designing for TV and then to personal styling. What prompted that change? So, um, yeah, so I worked, I'd been working in film and TV and, um, you know, like it was, it, it was such an amazing experience. I had an incredible experience, but I just felt like, yeah, I needed, I still, my love for fashion was still there. And I felt that I really wanted to have my own business in some way, but wasn't sure what it was. So I, yeah, it was quite a while that I was trying to search for something then when I had my son, um, so I had my son when I was 40. Okay. Um, I never thought I'd get married, never thought I'd have a child. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, my husband, now husband and I had been together for a long time. And um, then, you know, after a few years, anyway, this, you know, I was on a film job and I picked up this little um boy to take him to the costume bus um to get him dressed and this whole feeling came over me like oh my gosh I need to actually have a have a child and it was just so bizarre wow and, um and then so then I sorry I am going off never fear I go off on tangents all the time I love it this is how the best conversations happen <laughs> <laughs> And then, so I went home to my husband and said, oh, my God, I think we need to have a child. So I was 38 at that time. Anyway, yeah. fast forward, had my son at 40. And then that really, um, you know, obviously that early baby stage was oh yes, pretty horrendous. I didn't deal with it very well, as I think many women don't. Um, yeah. And But after that, I was just like, you know, working in film, it's very long hours. It's yeah. very intense. It is very, um, very draining. Um, and I I remember I was, I had, um, I was at a friend's place and we were having, um, you know, she had some other wonderful women over and we were all chatting and I was sort of chatting to them saying, oh, you know, I just feel like I need to do something else, but I just don't know what that is. And then one of the women said to me, why don't you just do personal styling? It's using all of your knowledge of what you have learned over the years. And I was like, oh, personal styling, what's that? And I didn't really know what it was. Hmm. So I did a bit of research and thought, oh, this sounds amazing. I can help women to dress. I can help them to feel empowered. I can just use all of what I've gained over the, you know, 20 plus years of my um you know, my knowledge. And so I ended up, um, yep. Yeah, so I, so I ended up, you know, starting my business, but I remember I had to send a photo in to, um, I ended up doing a, a course just to learn a little bit, you know, learn about body shape and bits mm-hmm. and pieces. Cause I love, um, educating myself. 
I love cool. learning new things. So do I. And so I um, yeah, saw this photo of myself and I just looked at it and just went, oh, my gosh, you look horrendous, lost, exhausted, and absolutely disgusting. I was just so embarrassed to send this photo to think that I was going to be dressing, wanted to dress woman, and that I wanted to really empower women. And I just looked at myself and I just thought, I need to do work on myself like I really do. And I think I was just exhausted from working in the film industry, exhausted from you know, being, um, having a young child. Um, and it really made me look and just realise that I was just really sad and unhappy. You were afraid so, to bring back your pink. Exactly, yes. exactly. So, yeah, so with that, I, um, yeah, I just um, have been going, on this journey for myself hmm. and also just wanting to really empower women you know learn. it's so interesting you say that because you know so often it is a personal journey that creates the well, not the motivation but creates your path because I'm going to be honest and say you know when I turn 50 and you know those of you that have listened to the podcast and heard episode two you know some of my story um I was like, right, my life is over, you know, this is terrible. Um, you know, then I was made redundant in 52, at 52, and then somehow I ended up on in this path of bring back your pink because as I healed and discovered the issues, and I so resonate with you saying, looking at that photo, because I share a photo in my, when I speak publicly, um, of me in 2020, and I look at that photo and actually it's really difficult each time I do the talk to not cry when I look at that photo because I can see the sadness. I can see the fact that I was wanting to be invisible. I can see that I was trying to shrinking to shrink. And it does make you, you know, feel sad. But then sometimes it sends you on a path that does help you empower women to be and like to be amazing, to feel amazing and to live their best lives. And I'm so excited for you that this is the path you've chosen to take because, you know, it is so rewarding helping women shine. It really is. Oh it's just God. the best feeling. So rewarding. So rewarding. So, yeah, that was about um, six, seven years ago. Um, and since then I've, yeah, I'm a completely different person to what I was back then. Yeah. It's just the power of clothing um, and the power of your mind and how you look at the world and everything is just, yeah, it's just so strong. And I feel that people just don't, just don't understand the importance of when you actually put something on, it really does change the way that you feel. Like, Honestly, you know, I always wore black. Yeah, you know, I, 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 yeah, and I, but I love black and I'm all about whoever, you know, I'm all about being who you're meant to be. But, you know, as soon as I put colour on, I just feel so much happier. And because I feel happier, it actually makes the people around you feel happier. When you're out shopping, people comment on your colour. They go, oh, you know, like you look, I love all your colour. It's making me feel happy, you know, to be able to do that and to, share with other women is is a truly amazing gift that you have um and very exciting for the future i want to ask um it's because it's interesting you know obviously you have chosen to work with women over 40 but many of them feel like the fashion world often overlooks them uh what are your thoughts on this and how does the personal styler address that because it it's actually quite a mindset thing too, you know, to go, oh, I'm a certain age. Uh, maybe I shouldn't wear that. Maybe I shouldn't wear so much color. Maybe I should not wear a pink, furry, sequined, massive <laughs> festival jacket with flamingos on it because I'm too old. Um, yeah, how do you work with that? So my motto is you can wear whatever you want. You have to love it. You have to feel amazing because if you feel amazing in something, then that is just going to generate out into the world and people will just, you know, you will just pull people in. 
it really it's so true um i'm sorry sorry to interrupt but it really is and it's because Ooh. i've been on this journey i realize this people gravitate to you absolutely um, because you're yeah. shiny and you feel happy and confident yeah and you know when someone says to you oh wow you look amazing today i love i love that jacket or that coat or you know something that you're wearing that means that what you are wearing that color everything that you are really radiating Mm. And it really does, it gives you a boost. So, you know, if you think about if you were to go down, you know, you just go down to the shop wearing, you know, a dangy pair of tracksuit pants, a ripped T-shirt, a pair of slippers, mm. you would probably walk to the shop, shoulders coming forward, head down, feeling a bit, you know, not that great, feeling like shit, basically. You pull over your slippers because slippers are dangerous. Right. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I've heard your podcast about that. <laughs> they are yes, danger, danger. Um, whereas if you actually take time and put something on that makes you feel good, feel, feel amazing, and you walk down to that shop, your shoulders are going to be back, your head's going to be high, you're going to have a smile on your face, mm. and you're just going to be putting out that positive energy. So, it, yeah, it really does. Makes, I think makes you feel proud and it makes you feel good within yourself. And when you feel good within yourself, it shines out and it radiates out from you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and yeah, I find, sorry, going back to the original question, I do, yeah. do uh, go off on tangents. Oh, so um, do I. Said, never fear. And I like, I like this podcast to be like that, you know, because sometimes the best conversations come from our tangents. <laughs> um so sorry I've just lost you okay there we go so let's we were back on our we went off on our tangents but back to that question um many fem, women feel like the fashion world often, often overlooks them at our age yes and yes I totally agree because I feel like there is not enough you know you look in a magazine and it's like there's a 14 year old you know this tiny skinny 14 year old uh wearing something that one she couldn't afford two yeah. she probably wouldn't ever wear mm -hmm. um and three you just you can't relate to it no it's completely unrelatable for us absolutely unrelatable and even brands that you know, are aiming for, you know, say like over 30s, sort of 40s, 50s mm -hmm. and above, then they still use really young models. Um, and and the size, you know, the average size woman in Australia is 14 to 16. 100%. And, you know, so, I mean, this is a whole nother, um, you know, size inclusivity is another yeah. whole well, as, as a plus size lady, um, I'm a size 18, um, 100%, but I am excited that a lot more brands are beginning to embrace, you know, Excellent. an 18 and a 20, but there's still some out there and you go, right, they go to a 14. I'm like, well, you know what? They're never going to be on my list um, yeah. because if they don't start embracing what women want, I'm not interested because, yeah, yeah I don't want to see the 14-year-old you know, and I mean, great if she's a size eight, like, like that's her size, but, you know, come on, let's put them on. And I am seeing a lot of labels now using two models, like the size eight to 10, then like a size 20 to say 24, which is amazing because we get to see the clothes well, on real bodies. How it looks on, you know, what it's going to look like on your body. Yeah. It's, it. yeah. I mean, we have come we have come further than what we have, but there is a lot more that can happen in that space. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. know, having not being able to take clients who would be a size 20, 22 into a Westfield to buy clothing, that is just absolutely despicable because it, yeah, it's just, you, you know, people should be able to walk into a store and I know specific stores have you know as as part of their brand you know this is their size range or you know this is um how they work but 
I think it really needs to be opened up a lot more. Online is, you know, there is a plethora online, but people like to go in and touch and feel and see what they're actually going to be buying. They do. I mean, look, I'm going to be honest and say I very rarely would shop in store because, yeah. one, you know, often you feel intimidated by the staff. Yeah. There's such a, um, there's still, you know, even though there's so much body positivity at the moment, but there's still that judgment. Um, so I buy, you know, and I mean, girls, if you like bright colors and plus size, um, little party dress is amazing. I buy from them a lot. Bohemian traders. I have so many of their beautiful dresses. The fabrics are just glorious. What I've got on now is Bohemian traders. Gorman goes up to a 20. I've got a number of beautiful Gorman dresses. You know, I buy all the patterns, but you know, you can, you can get them online, but yes, people do, especially you know, us ladies, you know, and especially let's going up into the 50s and 60s, you yeah. know, they like to go in store. You know, they sometimes don't feel confident shopping online. Um, yeah. COVID did change that a bit. I'm, you know, I shopped a lot online in COVID and now you don't see me go in store a lot, but I know a lot do still like to do that, you know, and it's sad that they don't feel comfortable doing it, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's so sad. Absolutely. And also I think... um you know, go talking about the whole thing of colour, it is, I think you kind of, you know, I used to wear a lot of black myself, but the older I get, the more I just want more colour in my life. Like I just, I want that vibrancy. I want, you know, I, I just, I want to be seen, you know, like just because, you know, so I'm 49, I'll be 50 at the end of this year. Mm. Um, and I feel like I'm going into my second life like I'm so excited yes but the best year of just all the selfish discovery I'm just working out you know who I am where where, where I want to go and I do feel like I'm having this rebirth and I've just introduced so much color into my into my world whereas before I just wasn't really wearing that much like I would wear a lot of black um I feel like we could be twins just quietly <laughs> Because it's as, the exact same journey that I've been on. And, you know, for women of our age, you know, often it is a scary time because they're like, oh, you know, the children are growing up. The children have left the nest. What am I going to do? But, you know, we are walking into the best phase of our life oh, um, because, you know, we we get to the stage where, you know, I'm a bit of a swearer, but zero fucks are given. You know, we do what we want to do. We have our I confidence do. back. Those yes. journeys we go on, give us that confidence and we go you know what I don't care my favorite saying is and I love it and I kind of created it myself but you know I may not be everyone's cup of tea but I'm sure as heck someone's shot a vodka and you know that is my little motto in my head I'm like I don't really care if you don't like me because somebody yeah. else will. and if you don't like my color you know I sometimes get you know people kind of go hmm like the up and down look I'm like you're not my people yeah totally absolutely absolutely and, yeah, I absolutely agree with you with that. And I think, um, you know, when you wearing colour, it just, uh, you know, a lot of my clients are also, you know, and, um, you know, because my clients are over 40, so they are wanting to introduce more colour into their life. They're just like, I've always just worn so much black, but I want more colour. I just want, you know, I just want to feel alive and, and you know, vibrant and, and excited, basically. So it is. It, I think it's really exciting. Yeah, it actually makes my heart sing hearing this because yeah. this is what I'm all about. Yeah. And you know, it just it does make my heart sing to hear it. And it's so exciting to hear that there's more and more women wanting to live like this. So, one question I want to ask: Can you recall a particular session where you helped? a client rediscover their love for passion you know you brought them out from the black and white world into the world of full color um I'd love to hear any transformation stories you may have oh yeah um one in particular so she um yeah this this client she's just so fabulous she would wear a lot of black um just never you know would would wear very you know like creams very subdued um and then she felt that she wanted to wear more color so then obviously she um invested 
in my services to help her with this. Because so, it's scary, yeah. too. It's scary. Right. Like if you don't, it's scary because if you don't know colour, you don't know where to start. Sorry, I just had to pop that in there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, not knowing what colours to put together, not knowing what colours suit you. Yeah. And so I remember this one particular um, outfit that I put together, she just looked incredible and she felt incredible. So it was all of this, um, like it was orange and pink and, you know, and lime. Oh, she just looks so good. And she I like the dress I've got on today, orange, pink and lime. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a top, a coat, these pants, yeah. these shoes, the bag, everything. Mm-hmm. She went to this event and this woman came up to her and she said, oh, my gosh, you look amazing. Did a stylist do that for you or did you do that for you? And, yeah, it was just, you know, when she said that to me, I was just like, that is just so great. Like everything, you know, she felt so amazing. One, when she looked at herself, she felt great going to the event and then having someone come up to her, and, you know, compliment her on her outfit is, yeah. So now she is just colour all the way. We just do so much colour with her in so many fun ways. And I think it's just really her confidence has just been boosted. She just feels, yeah, she just feels fabulous and amazing in what she wears. You must have done a happy dance when she told you about that story. Like <laughs> you must have just been dancing around the house going, yeah. Yes, yes. Because that is exactly what I want to give my clients. I want to give them that feeling of feeling fabulous because we all deserve it. 100%. Actually, it's interesting because I've got some notes here, you know, um, to, for us to talk about. And I refer back to an Insta post that you actually put up. Um, making yourself feel good and look good should be your number one priority. And after that, everything else just falls into place. And it feels like that's exactly what happened for that lady. Um, because, you know, if you feel you look good, you then feel good. And that just, it is, it's like this knock-on effect and ripple effect across every single thing you do. You know, I, um, like, I obviously work with a lot of business owners. So, you know, it makes you feel confident to show up in your business, show up, you know, if you're like an employee, like if you know at your work, but also in your relationships for your family, for your friends, you know, everything just falls into place. And not only are you feeling lifted, it's also lifting up everyone around you and and they feel that and it just, you know, it just filters through to all of those areas of, of your life. Yeah, it's this is such a gratifying chat, I have to say, because, you know, I really feel like so many ladies that are listening out there that, you know, are feeling like they are faded, you know, wearing the neutrals. Um, I'm excited for them to hear this because, yeah, whilst I dress in colour, it's amazing that there's been such a colour comeback. Um, yeah, as such. Yeah. So it's super, super cool. Um, let's talk about virtual outfit curation. Like I'm fascinated by that how does the process work and especially for us ladies myself very much included um <clears throat> you may be a bit um tech a litter perhaps um or wary or new to the digital fashion scene how does it work so with um so i have had this i have this um curated for real bodies the mm-hmm. online shoppable magazine that i have ah. so it comes out every now and then um, and so basically what it is, is you can actually shop. So I, I have these, um, kind of, it's kind of like a magazine. It's got all of these different outfits. There's lots of tips and tricks in there. Mm-hmm. And then you can actually click on the items and you can actually shop from the websites. So I can, you know, curate for you, um, as this is not to do with the magazine. So um, the virtual styling to create for you a look. Um, so if there's pieces missing in your wardrobe, um, mm-hmm. if you've got an event coming up or anything like that, and then put some boards together where you can actually, from your, the, you know, the comfort of your bed, if you want to do it in bed, you can just I love that there. Um, yeah, the virtual um 
styling space has come a very, very long way, a very mm-hmm. long way. So, yeah, it's very exciting and there's a lot of fun things that um, can happen with it. So, ladies, you need to go and follow Taurus um, on her Instagram or connect with her. I will have all the, in the show notes, there will be all of the links. But do go and have a look because obviously she's got some really, really exciting, I did not even know this, um, you know, some really exciting things happening. So go, look at Instagram, connect, because, you know, who knows what you may discover. Um Fashion and confidence do go hand in hand. You know, this is something that's become really obvious chatting today. So if the ladies are resistant to, you know, wearing the colour, um, how do you help them reclaim or discover that style, um, especially when they feel very disconnected from the fashion world? And as we chatted about before, you know, we are the forgotten ones. So... You know, classics are all classic pieces are always going to be those pieces that mm. are going to last forever. So I'm very much about working with what you already have. Mm-hmm. And you just add in those special pieces, investment pieces that are going to work with what you have. Mm-hmm. So it's not about going out and buying a whole new wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Because you actually have to look at what you already have and you need to work through those pieces. You know, we've all got those pieces that we can't quite let go of. Oh, yes. I've still got a few black pieces in the wardrobe. Yeah. And, I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm going to an awards event in a, in a, a few weeks. I'm wearing black sequin dress, like full-length black sequins. Mm-hmm. But I'm popping it out with um, hot pink sneakers, hot pink diamonded bag, pink jewellery. Um, but yeah, I can't let go of that because it is too classic. Yes. And it's so, and it's exactly like what you just said. You can just add those little hints of color mm-hmm. um, on there. So, you know, it might be if, if, you know, someone is wanting to get a little bit more into color, but they haven't really, they're a little bit scared of it, then, you know, accessories are a great way, are a great way to do it. Just go and buy a pair of earrings with a bit more color, you know. Mm-hmm. If you're a silver or gold person and you only wear silver and gold, just go and buy a pair of, you know, pink earrings. And just wear, even if you just, if you feel so uncomfortable that, oh, you know, I just feel like I'm so noticeable wearing these pink earrings, just wear them making dinner. Just wear them going and brushing your teeth. Just wear it, wear them so that you can get used to it. It's like I tell my clients, um, because I like to introduce them to them with new styles and new things. Yeah. It's a little bit different to maybe what they wouldn't usually go for. Mm-hmm. And if they're like, oh, I love it, but, you know, I don't know. It just It's just so different to how I would feel. So I just say, just, you know, just go and make, you know, wear it making dinner. You just get used to it. Make yeah. yourself feel confident in it. And then gradually... Yeah, and gradually wear them out and everyone's going to comment. I have a funny story to tell because um, at a conference recently, um, one of my friends, Jess, talking to you, Jess, um, she had black on and she had gold pair of earrings, but she lost one of the earrings. Oh. And she's like, oh, has anyone seen my earring? And I'm like, you know, I was sitting downstairs at this conference. I said, Jess, because I was staying overnight. I'm like, Jess, I've got loads of pairs of earrings because I was talking at this conference. Um I took seven outfits because, you know, I needed to make sure I had plenty. Um, and, of course, I had the matching pairs of earrings. So I'm like, come, come up to my room, Jess. I have loads of pairs of earrings. Now, I did not have anything that was gold or, you know, colourless. It was all very vibrant. So she chose these amazing big pair of vibrant earrings um, from Xanadu Designs. And she came up to me later in the day. She said, oh, my gosh, everyone is commenting on these earrings. I'm like, Jess. That's what the colour does. She looked beautiful in black, but these earrings just popped it out. And, you know, yeah. I'm going to be interested to see how she goes in the future, whether she starts to wear more colour um, and more, like, bigger, more statement earrings because she felt so good at the end of the day with everyone commenting on them. Yeah, and, and I imagine that she will. She will. Yeah. And you, know, you, can just, you can just build on that, you know, then get a handbag, get some <laughs> shoes. Yes. And then, you know, a, a coat is a really good way to, because it's something that you can take off. So if you're feeling, oh, yes. you take it off. 
And then you've got, you know, your more subdued color underneath it. So you can just gradually build and build and then you'll just get more confidence and more confidence to wear more color. That's exactly how I started. Um, you know, I started wearing a little bit more color, but then I found little party dress and there was just this amazing bright dress. So I bought it. Um, it's a classic style. It's a it's called Marley. You know, it's very flattering, really easy to wear, really comfortable. And I sat in my wardrobe for a while and then I'm like, right, I'm going to wear this dress. And so many people commented on it. And I'm like, I love wearing colour. I feel so happy in it. So, yeah, that was actually probably the first really colourful piece. But at the time I wore white sneakers. Now, you know, I have white sneakers, but generally you will see me. I think I've got lime green leopard on right now. Um, I've got pink. I've got full diamonds. <laughs> I have gold. I have orange. I have all of the colours. Um, wow. Yeah, it's amazing how it just progresses and you become more and more comfortable with that. Um, another comment from your Instagram, um, a little reminder to let you know you are perfect just the way you are. If you're not happy with what you see, then learn how to dress to highlight the good bits and camouflage the bits you're not so fond of. That is so important. So you can look in the mirror and not go, oh, my legs, you know, oh, my bumpy bits. Um, you know, how, how do women learn what suits them the best? How do you help them find what suits them the best? Because some ladies look amazing in pants. I am not one of those ladies. I do not look great in pants except for wide leg palazzo pants. Yeah. How do they figure out and how do you help them figure out what's the best look for them? So, yeah, I mean, every woman has a different body shape. Mm. The best place to start is to actually stand naked in the mirror or with your undies and your bra on and you just just look at your body and don't look at it as if you're saying oh god you're so disgusting look at that there look at that there you know I've got that just look at it and just thank your body for taking you through your life to where you are now and just think of all of you know all of those lumps and bumps and everything have got stories to tell you know, it can be quite confronting and, you know, we generally look at ourselves in the mirror and go, oh, you look terrible or, you know, oh, I hate getting my photo taken. Hands up you. Exactly. So just change that language and just go, oh, yeah, I'm going to have my photo taken. Okay, yeah, great. Or I'm going to look in, my, look in the mirror and I'm going to choose one really positive thing about myself and you just say to you and you just say to yourself, I look fabulous today. And it completely changes your mindset. Like it's all about mindset and all about talking to yourself in a positive way as opposed to a negative way. You know, you wouldn't say to a best friend, oh, you look so fat and so disgusting in that because they don't. They look beautiful and amazing and gorgeous. I always it's say this little um, quote I have in my head that says, you know, talk to yourself like you would talk to your best friend. Yes, yes, exactly. You, know, yeah. you wouldn't say that to your best friend. No, you wouldn't. And, you know, I think we're all just, we all overanalyze ourselves so much mm -hmm. and we really we really are awful to ourselves yeah. really awful to it, and mean to ourselves. Oh, we are so mean. Sorry? We are so mean. So mean, so mean. We just have to be kinder and accept and stop judging ourselves and comparing ourselves to other people because no one is the same as us. We're all very unique. And that's what we should really love about ourselves. I like to learn. I mean, I went through a very big the self-discovery from suggestive language um, that, you know, people that have heard my story know how suggestive language literally shaped my world from the day I was born because I was too big, too much, too loud, um, then to my ex-husband who, well, you know, took the art of tearing me down to like quite a, you know, next level, um, yeah. you know, used to be so pretty before you got so fat and ugly. So there was a lot of self-hatred in me. But you know what now, after being on the journey, flipping the script as I call it, you know, if something negative comes out, I replace it with the positive, the you know, the opposite and the positive. Um, I can now look at myself and go, yeah, you know, I've got lumps and bumps. 
Um, you know, I got a few of them. I am plus size, but you know what? I love me. I love me for me. I embrace well, myself. And for you, the lovely ladies that are listening, I want you to remember you are perfect just the way you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't need to change anything. You know, a lot of people, they say, oh, you know, I just, I've really wanted, I've really been wanting to invest in you, but I just want to lose that little bit of weight and then I'll, then I'll um, come and see you. And I'm like, yeah, but if you, if I could show you how to dress your Mm -hmm. body now, you would just feel so empowered and so amazing. Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know, you're probably never going to lose that weight and you're just going to keep feeling really terrible because you're saying all these negative thoughts to you. 100%. And as somebody that has struggled with weight, you know, and I am like, you know, I'm a broad frame, I'm a size 18, but as somebody that has struggled with weight, um, I put on a lot of weight in 2020. I've subsequently lost 30 kilos of that. Um, You know, if you want to lose the weight, fine and dandy, as long as it's, you know, because you want to. Exactly. Not because you feel you should. I did not feel healthy. I yep. was going backwards and I suddenly thought, do you know what? If I want to see my grandchildren be able to run around with them, I need to lose some weight. And I don't feel comfy in my skin. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I went on the journey. But I say to everybody, if your comfy is don't do, banish the word should from your vocabulary. It's because yeah. you want to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, dressing is all about balance. It's just balancing your proportions. Yes. Balancing your exactly. proportions. You know, like if you've got big boobs, just, you know, wearing a low-cut scoop or V-neck, open that chest. Don't cover it up. Exactly. Exactly like how you've done it. Yeah, I can't. If I wear anything up like this, I truly feel like I am a cow because I do have big boobs. Like They're like a, an E-cup. So, yeah. you know, if I wear things that come up here, they are the things, the, the girls, as I call them. And I mean, I love my girls, you know, they're the part of my body that I actually do love the most, but it doesn't make me look good. It makes me look frumpy. So you will always see me in a V because of the elongation of the body, because I'm not right. tall. Um, you know, it is just about changing those things up and having a look in the mirror and I'm telling you now and you would say the same to these ladies if they looked in the mirror and go oh my gosh I don't like what I'm seeing if they saw their best friend wearing that they'd be going you look amazing totally absolutely absolutely so it's just yeah it's just learning and tweaking those little things of how you can just dress yourself in a Mm. way that you can you know you can look in the mirror and go oh yeah actually you know what I look pretty hot. Yeah, yeah. I look flamazing. I just had to throw my flamazing word in there just because I have to. Yeah. Now, I could actually chat with you all day because, you know, I feel like we've got so much in common um, and I feel like we've given some really, you in particular, I've given some amazing advice to the ladies that are listening. Um, but we do need to end it up because we will be here for like three hours and I don't know if anyone's got time to listen to a three-hour <laughs> podcast. For our ladies out there, you know, you have given amazing advice, but what is your top style advice to help them embrace their age and feel fabulous? What would be the one piece of advice you would give them? Just be kind to yourself. And can it be two? One, give me three. (laughs) Be kind to yourself. And two, only buy pieces that you feel amazing in. Only wear outfits that you feel amazing in. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more. Be kind to yourself, ladies. You know, there's a, there is truly enough unkindness out there in the world without you being like that to yourself. Yes. Um, and, yeah, wear the things that you feel amazing in. You know, if I now get something, I look at it and go, meh, it just goes back. Yeah. Like I won't wear it because I like to wear things that make me feel great. And, and that, I think that is the absolute, yeah, you've nailed it. It's the secret, you know, only wear the things that makes your heart sing when you look at yourself. And if you've got those pieces in your wardrobe that just you put on and you're just like, oh, I don't know, I just don't feel good, just don't wear them. Get rid of it. Take it out of the wardrobe. Don't even look at it. Remove it. Give it to a friend. Yeah. When I was going through my wardrobe recently, I was purging myself of all of the black. Six bags of black clothing went down to St. Vinny's. 
because I'm like, I don't want it anymore. It's a goner. Like I kept three pieces that I love because I love the shape and style of the dress and I know I can pop it with colour. Um, yeah. But all the other clothes that were like my hiding clothes, they went. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to see them. Yeah. That's great. Right. Yeah. Girls, that is your number one tip. Wear what makes you feel amazing and get rid of what doesn't. Thank you so much, Taurus, for coming on here today. I feel like this has been an epic episode and so great for the ladies that are listening. I really, really appreciate your time and, you know, knowledge and and kindness. Um, You can be found at The Personal Styler on Instagram, Mm -hmm. The Personal Styler website. Correct. And do you have Facebook? I do have Facebook, yeah, and the personal styler, yeah. Fantastic. All of these will be in the show notes, ladies, so please click on these and go pay a visit to Taurus, and I know that she will make you feel better because she's made me feel great today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. Again, um, ladies, thank you so much for listening. Remember, girls, life is short. Live it in vibrant colour. Don't let yourself be faded. And I will catch you next week. Bye. Thanks, Jen. Hey, ladies, I created this podcast because I know we need more of it to help us bring back our pink and live our best lives. But guess what? We can't do this alone. So if you loved this episode, let's spread the world. Share it on your socials. Send it to a friend. And don't forget to write us a review. By doing this, you become part of the movement to bring back your pink and inspire others to do the same. I'm incredibly grateful to have you in my world as we live life in full colour and become our authentic selves. Together, we're unstoppable. Let's keep rocking and bringing back the pink.